Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program version 1.0.5. This is episode 27. Now you remember at the end of the previous episode, I was having some difficulty transmitting my picture, which you can see here, this lovely picture of the sun, back to Kerbin. Now at the time I thought it was because I didn't have a direct line of sight to KSC. But that can't be the problem because I am not playing with remote tech. Uh, so it can't be that. Uh, so a little bit of research later identified two small problems. Now the first was with the mod known as Science Alert. And Science Alert has a little bit of a problem in that it can't transmit science when installed. Um, there is a patch for it, a community generated patch, but the mod developer Evil Reaper is working every hour of day and night to correct the problem in the base mod. Uh, but in the meantime, I have uninstalled it. Uh, so it is not one of my many essential mods for the time being. But if that hadn't been the case, it still would not have been a successful transmission. And I'll show you why. So let's try and transmit this science data. Notice I'm going to lose 50% of the available science. And just keep an eye on the status window, which will appear here in the top left. So let's click transmit and start watching the messages as they appear up there in the left. Notice we ran out of electric charge and then data transmission was aborted and the data was returned to the canister from which it came. Now it's a little known fact or at least it was a little known fact to me that if you transmit science, obviously you lose some of the science value, but if that transmission is interrupted, you lose a heck of a lot more. So there is a secret, and that secret has been introduced in version 1.0.5, it's in the small print of the release notes, in that now every transmitter be uh, has an additional setting uh, here, require complete. In other words, require a complete transmission of any one unit of science or roll back the transmission, saving that additional degradation of science. Now, of course, that's great if you are trying to collect science, but we're not. We're trying to transmit a picture of the sun, even a very poor picture of the sun, in order to complete this contract. So by clicking this option here, we can change this now to allow partial transmission. And we get a warning up here in the status window. And now we can transmit the data. So let's do that and watch the status window. So again, we start the transmission. Uh, data is being uploaded and we are rapidly running out of electric charge. We've run out of electric charge, but it keeps trying and does transmit just a dribble back to KSC. A dribble was all we needed to complete this contract. So that is one contract successfully completed. Now, of course, there was something else I asked people in the previous episode, and that is, what had I forgotten? And if we check off our various messages, we'll find out exactly that. So first we have a world first milestone. Again, some additional milestones have been recently added. In this case, we have got some science data from the sun. It gives us a handy amount of funds, a little bit of science and a little bit of reputation. We completed our great picture of the sun and that gave us a whopping 120 science. So uh, that's going to be very, very handy. Uh, let's have a look at the rest of those messages. Uh, we positioned our satellite, I think that was in uh, an earlier part of the episode, so we've done that, and got ourselves 89,000 funds. However, this is what I forgot. I forgot stage recovery, and I forgot to put parachutes on my dropped stages, so I lost them. And that is... You know, not a great amount of funds, but funds I could have recovered. Um, but, that said, 
We did also complete earlier in the episode the test of the Rhino engine for 68,000 funds. We tested the Mammoth engine for 115,000 funds. And that is going to be a handy amount of money because we are going to need that money as we will see soon. So let's head back to KSC and find out what Gene has to offer us. As usual, Gene has been hard at work and he has identified this contract as one that may prove useful and valuable to us. It is from Iconic Symphonic Protonic Electronics and it requires us to extract 1,150 units of ore and deliver it to Kerbin. Now, we don't actually have to land it on Kerbin, we just have to bring it into orbit and maintain stability for 10 seconds, which raises the prospect of creating an orbital station for Kerbin on which we process ore into fuel. So there's an opportunity. We will be advanced uh, over 200,000 funds. For completion, we will get half a million funds and a large amount of reputation. But notice down here at the bottom, if we decline this contract, we will lose one reputation. And that, again, is something that's been added in 1.0.5, that declining contracts will lose you reputation. So no more spamming of contracts until you find one you really like. But I do actually like this one, so let's accept it and head on over to the research centre because there's something we need to do. Now in the research centre we have a bit of a problem because uh, we're not going to be able to get drills, uh, the Drillomatic large mining excavator or the smaller um, drills for different materials. Uh, we're not going to be able to get these various converters and uh, nuclear reactors until we have researched this advanced science tech and we can't do that because the science center is not capable of housing the necessary research equipment to do it so we're going to have to spend some of our lovely funds to do an upgrade so let's just pop out and do that Now if we right click on the Research and Development Centre, you'll see that it's going to take us uh, 1.9 million funds. Fortunately we have uh, a little bit more than that, 1.9, 1.6 million funds. We have quite a, quite a bit more than that, so uh, we can actually do this upgrade, but it is quite expensive. If we hover over the upgrade button, you can see that the only bonus we're going to get uh, is the research science limit uh, will be uh, upgraded to unlimited. In other words, we can now research everything else. So let's press the upgrade button, uh, buy all that new equipment. As we can see now, it's now a fully upgraded centre. So let's pop back in to the research centre and have a look more closely at advanced science tech. So this is the extra node we need, Advanced Science Tech. It's 550 science. We have plenty of science uh, to do that purchase with. Uh, we're going to get some additional sensors uh, that we can use to collect science. Uh, we will get the converters that will allow us to convert ore into fuel, although we'll need that a little bit later for our station. Uh, no point in using up all our collected ore if we're not going to complete our contract. We'll also get the Drillomatic Junior, which is a small uh, mining excavator, so uh, perhaps for an experimental craft just to seek out a decent place for us to get some ore. Uh, we have the uh, Convertitron 125, that's uh, half the size uh, of the larger one, so again might be good for an experimental craft just to see how uh, conversions work. We also get holding tanks, the uh, standard holding tank and the radial holding tank, and of course we get the main large drillomatic mining excavator as well. Plus, of course, we get some drills for particular material types from the USI colonization, uh, colonization 
uh, division. Uh, so water and minerals in that example. And we get uh, different types of nuclear reactors, which will allow us to generate power again for ground stations. And they are provided by USI Umbra Space Industries. So that will all make for excellent ground stations when we have enough cash. So let's purchase uh, that science, uh, purchase that research. Uh, so that opens up that. We still have 428 science. Uh, so maybe we will pop back and find some other bits and pieces a little bit later. But in the meantime, I think we need to build ourselves a small prospecting vehicle for our base around Minmus. So let's get cracking on with that. Now, with Mimus's very light gravity, very uh, low level of gravity, rovers aren't actually that great, as we saw with my earlier attempt at an RCS kind of buggy to go round Minmus. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a small prospecting vehicle based on the Capola module. So uh, this is going to be a little lander and the lander will include some small drills, tanks and all the necessary bits and pieces just to get a hang of what uh, drilling on Minmus is going to be like. So let's create the basics. Let's get uh, a basic fuel tank uh, aboard. We'll use this X200 uh, fuel tank and then a small uh, where we go, Poodle liquid engine to go underneath it. So that's going to be the basis of our lander. Uh, so let's finish off with uh, legs, uh, landing legs. Let's just search for landing legs. Uh, we will use these heavy duty uh, landing struts. Uh, I think what we'll do is we will use three or maybe four. Let's have a look. Four. There we go. Four of those landing struts. Not quite uh, symmetrical. So let's get those placed like so. So that gives us a relatively good base. Let's just make sure they do actually reach down low enough. They don't quite reach low enough. That would have been a bit embarrassing. So let's use our offset tool and just pull these down a little. How much further? A little one more click. There we go. How about that? That should just about give us a uh, decent ground clearage, uh, clear clearance from our engines. Let's go back to place mode. So that's the basis of the lander right there. So next we are going to need some drills and some ore holding tanks. So let's have a look at the holding tanks. And we've got two holding tanks. Uh, we've got the radial holding tank and the small holding tank. Now the small one only contains uh, 300 so it's going to be at least four trips worth of the small holding tank but this is only a prospecting vehicle so we'll start off with a couple of radial tanks so let's put a couple of radial tanks here on the side so let's just rotate them around get them the right way around um, no not that way around let's rotate them <laughs> we'll get them in the end this way around uh, this way. Yes, there we go. Right. So that should be a couple of holding tanks. Now they're only going to contain uh, 150 in total, but it's enough for our experiments. Uh, so that's a good start. Uh, now this is the large drillomatic uh, drill. This is much, much too big for our prospecting uh, vehicle. So let's go for the much smaller drill. Uh, which is the Junior uh, Drillomatic, uh, Drillomatic Junior. So let's get a couple of those, one for each tank. And again, let's just double check uh, they would reach the surface. They do have a fair reach, but that's not quite enough. So let's go again to our offset and bring them down a click or two. Is that going to be just okay? I think that will do okay I think it's not uh, uh, not looking um, too much as if it's stuck to the side of thin air so that'll that'll do uh, 
Uh, now, one thing I do note about these drills is they do heat up. Uh, their optimum temperature is 100, uh, sorry, 500 kelvins, and shutdown will be at 1,000 kelvins. So we have, are going to have to worry about uh, heating. Uh, so we are going to have to put some radiators on this vehicle just to dissipate some of the heat. So we'll come back to radiators near the end when we see how much space we have around our vehicle to place our various radiators. Now what next? What else do we need? Now I'm actually going to dock this to the space station uh, both for transferring resources and uh, for transferring kerbals. Uh, so we are going to need a sort of docking stack up here at the end and the docking stack is going to have to include a lot of our uh, bits and pieces. So let's begin uh, with some of those bits and pieces. We'll go for a battery first. Uh, a small round rechargeable battery and then from our control section we need our scriptable control system so we can use KOS uh, and just so I remember my KOS scripts are rather large so let's increase disk space. We're also going to need some RCS, we're going to do some docking so let's get a small RCS tank uh, and then we can place all of our bits and pieces on top of those tanks as well and finally uh, to complete our docking stack anyway let's find a clampatron there we go standard uh, clampatron for the dock there so that's going to be our docking stack now to complete docking uh, we need some docking control so we go for the standard RV105 thruster blocks and let's get four of those and I'm just going to chuck them on here for the moment I'm going to bring up um, we're going to bring up the RCS build aid which gives us this turning circle that shows the uh, the torque on the vessel uh, given its current content and fuel and I'm just going to roughly place them where I think they need to be for this vehicle now we can see over here the total turning torque is 0.049 kilonewtons. Now that's going to change in a while as we add a few more bits and pieces. So I won't be worried too much, but that's roughly where they're going to need to go. Uh, so let's uh, close that for a second and just finish off with some of our other parts that we need. Now we need some way of recharging. Now we'll go for some panels. Uh, we've got two types of panels. We've got the photovoltaic panels that once extended cannot be retracted. Uh, and then we've also got the type that can be closed up. Now given we're going to be docking, undocking, docking, undocking, I think I'm going to go for the closed style. And I'll go for four of these uh, one by six. Uh, panels. So let's just put those here, four of those, uh, place them, let's place them down here a little bit away from the docking port in case I do want to extend them. Uh, that's not quite symmetrical so let's bring that round like so. There we go. So that's symmetrical. And I think I'll also place a set of fuel cells. These fuel cells use liquid fuel and oxidizer to create electricity so they'll work even when Minmus is in the dark. So I'll place four of those as well for emergency power on the dark side. So that's uh, emergency power uh, sorted out. So what else do we do we need? Well we could do with some uh, life support uh, so we've got some life support supplies for the pilot. So let's uh, plant those around here at the back. We only probably need one of those uh, because we get quite a lot. We get a hundred supplies, uh, so that should be uh, should be plenty. Uh, we're getting down to some of the nitty gritty parts now. Uh, some lighting might be good. Some illuminators. Let's have a look. Uh, we could use these tiny illuminators, but I actually want some ground illuminators. So I'm going to go for these slightly larger Mark IIs, and we'll put four of those 
uh, one over each landing leg to give us a bit of light on the ground. Uh, so that's a good start. Um, what next? Well, for a bit of role play, let's go for an antenna uh, and just assume that we are actually going to try communicating back uh, to the vessel up in uh, orbit, up to our Minmus orbital uh, station. We need from control, not forgetting from control, we need. Uh, where are we? We need our. Uh, oh no, it's not control. It's in science, or is it? No, science. There we go. I just saw it. We need our Kerbal engineering system. So let's plonk a Kerbal engineering system on uh, on here. Let's place it up here where we can see it. I only want the one of those. So let's plonk that right there. Uh, so we have uh, plenty of control because we have our KOS and our Kerbal engineering system now installed. Now there is one other device. There is one other device we need from the science section and that is the surface scanning module uh, and this will improve the quality of our ore detection purposes uh, uh, processes and this is the purpose of this vehicle after all it is a module designed for finding the highest concentrations of ore so we can take one of those and I think I'll place this uh, near uh, there we go place it near the uh, entrance there in case uh, the pilot uh, needs to attend uh, to it uh, and I might also I think move I think we'll do the same uh, with the uh, food supplies that just move those around to the front as well uh, so this is looking uh, pretty good uh, we have our thruster blocks uh, for uh, maneuvering and docking we have charge both on the dark side with our fuel cells and on the light side with our photovoltaic panels. We have drills and tanks and the only thing we really have uh, left is our uh, radiators. So let's have a look at the radiators. Uh, radiators. We've got these various radiator panels. We've got the static panels, uh, we've got the large uh, static panels and then we've got the various uh, extendable panels as well. So I wonder how large these large panels can be. That's rather, I think, a bit too large. Because what I was thinking of doing is plonking the panels on the tanks, or we could put them around uh, the side here. Why don't we put them around the sides? So we have four. Um, is that going to be? Are they going to be? They're not going to be in the right place. Um, six are going to be in the wrong places as well. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't we go back to two symmetry? Um, that's going to be in the wrong place. So let's move that up. Uh, we'll move that up for the time being. We may have to come back to repositioning that scanner. So that's uh, two panels there. Uh, get another two panels. Um, here, let's just see if we can position them the same height so they look quite neat. There we go. Is that another set of panels? Radiator small. I think that's in. Has that been embedded? Yeah, I think that's. Um, I think that's slightly embedded into the hull. Not sure why that would be. Is that embedded? Or am I just being picky? I think I'm just being picky. It's just the way the uh, I think it's just way the texture is being painted when it's at that angle. So let's just reposition that one. So that gives us four panels neatly positioned uh, between the legs, so we can carry on doing that, and we can put a couple of panels one there and another one here. So if I can get that one lined up. There we go. So that's uh, six panels uh, for purposes of uh, dissipating the heat uh, from the 
Oh, <laughs> looks like I've got duplicates of the life support. So let's just correct that. Uh, must have had dual symmetry on. So let's go down one symmetry level. And same for the scanning probe. Have I just got three? I just got three packs now. Yes, I have. I went the wrong way, didn't I? There we go. So that's life support. Uh, we've then got the surface scanning module, which will uh, give us more accurate readings for the surface. Hopefully, it's not going to be obstructed by this panel. That would be uh, that would be rather awkward, uh, very awkward indeed. Um, so everything's looking pretty good. So I think this should be a functional lander now. What do we need to check? Well, let's just retract. Uh, let's just uh, retract the uh, legs there, retract uh, the drill, come on, let's see, there we go, retract uh, the drill. Now I think we just need to double check the positioning of the thruster blocks using the RCS build aid. So you can see uh, with all these radiators added we have changed the center of mass somewhat. So let's pick up uh, the thruster blocks, make sure we have four of them and just reposition this until we have the smallest torque which is going to be around there I think um, round about uh, 0.34. Now with these tanks filling up with um, these tanks filling up with ore, let's see how heavy they get with ore so when they're both full of ore we still got a bit of a, a bit of a rotation, you can see the dry and wet center of mass being separate there. Uh, so uh, we are going to have a slight torque, but we should be okay. Uh, we should be okay docking. That's my uh, main concern. So let's um, uh, rename this Prospect Mark 1. So let's save that. And let's get on with adding a lander. Now, to save a little bit of time, uh, taking this lander up into orbit, I have actually done one earlier. Uh, what I've done is I have a sub-assembly for uh, doing this sort of thing. It's the Times 2 heavy launcher uh, and that's basically uh, a tank uh, to be placed on whatever launch stage we're going to put in here. Now of course we can't just attach this directly. We're going to have to put a separator and a aerodynamic shell. So let's go and do that. So let's go to parts and its structural parts and we're going to need this larger Rockamax brand decoupler. So that will uh, decouple our uh, main uh, lander there when we arrive at Minmus. We're going to need an aerodynamic shell. Now I've not unlocked the uh, uh, Karazmit engineering uh, larger uh, uh, aerodynamic shell and that would look a little bit uh, dumb. The largest one we have is the 1.5 uh, which isn't large enough for this purpose so we're going to have to go back to the uh, confetti style of uh, aerodynamic shell which is the Airstream protective shell 2.5 uh, meters so let's just put that in there and then let's start building our shell. Now this is not particularly wide so we can get away with a fairly narrow body. So let's just build this up as close as we can get. So let's see, close fairing. Let's go back. It's not going to allow me to close the fairing. So let's get here. Come on. One there. Oh, I can see. Yeah, there we go. Now if you look, it's not very easy to see against the uh, the grey backdrop here, but we're looking for a uh, place cross-section to go green. So let's see if we can get it. There we go. Go green. And then we're looking for close fairing to go green as well. Doesn't seem to want to. I can't quite get the right. There we go. No. Let's go back. So right, right button takes us back a stage. So let's go back to this stage and see if we can construct something a little bit more. Now you know why I like the procedural fairings. 
So closed fairing, there we go, closed fairing. There we go, a uh, nice uh, shell-shaped fairing. Uh, one of the advantages of the confetti-style Airstream fairing is A, it's transparent, and B, it does expand out of the way. So the stock fairing does have its advantages. Uh, so uh, in this case, um, it has done very well for us. So let's just uh, lift this section uh, up, uh, make some space uh, now for our sub-assembly. So let's go and get the times 2 heavy launcher and let's drop that in there. Uh, so we have uh, a fairly uh, sizeable uh, orange tank based uh, launcher. We have uh, three skipper engines here at the base, three orange tanks connected asparagus style. Uh, so let's just double check the staging. We have the three engines and the four launch stabilizers. Uh, we have parachutes uh, for stage recovery. Thanks for remembering. Uh, there are our separators and at the same time we separate the orange tanks. I've currently got the fairing. I think I'm going to separate off the fairing and have that uh, separate. Uh, we then have uh, when we separate out the uh, lander vehicle is when those uh, parachutes will be armed. Uh, so that's all looking good. So let's save this as uh, plus uh, the launcher. And in the next episode, we'll see if we can get this thing to Minmus. But with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.